Earth's surface. Temperatures decrease by one degree Celsius as elevation increases by 150 meters. Compared with that of other regions on the same latitude, the temperature in the Qinghai Tibet Plateau with an average elevation of more than 4,000 meters is much lower. On the other hand, the high elevation has drawn more sunshine, which offsets the lack of energy here. Accordingly, various plants grow and fill the plateau with life. The streets in Lhasa are bustling, even in winter. Located on the Valley Plain, this city enjoys over 3,000 hours of sunlight every year and is thus called a city of sunlight. Despite its modern pace, some old traditions are still kept. Many Lhasa natives start their morning with sweet tea. It is a drink boiled with black tea and milk. Grab a cup, sit in a familiar place and put your change on the table. No one worries about paying the wrong price. Even strangers have something to talk about. Their change on the table is mixed together and they gradually become friends as they enjoy their drinks. Later, they eat a bowl of Tibetan noodles and start a day's work in the sunny weather. The fine weather in Lhasa is due to the influence of a mountain range. The Himalayas, home of ice and snow, the highest point on the earth. Deep in the range, there are many gullies, which are channels for warm and moist airflow. This makes here moist and filled with sunlight. In one of these gullies, Sherpa people are transplanting rice seedlings. Most Sherpa people live in China's Tibet, Nepal, and India. They are planting chicken feet millet, which resembles chicken feet when ripe. The cliff-hanging bees in the Himalayas are the biggest of their kind in the world. They can fly 4,000 meters above sea level to search tenacious flowers on the plateau. The diameter of most hives exceeds two meters, and they are hung on the most precipitous cliffs in the valley. These two rivers meet and hit each other creating huge waves. 200 meters above hangs a big hive that has never been touched. The Sherpa tribe outnumber all others in the world who have climbed on Mount Chomolonga. Every year, 
Nima will collect beehives, not for honey, but to complete an important mission. Even the eldest and most experienced honey gathering people in the village are afraid to go there. The holy mission motivated them to make a risky decision. For the record, only two or three people have been there. The bamboo they cut now serves as the tools. Making smoke is the key to driving away bees. Smoke should be ready before bees detect it, or else it is hard to imagine the consequence. The Himalayan cliffhanging bees are the most aggressive and poisonous among other colonies. At this very moment, it suddenly begins to rain. The torch is put out, so is the smoke. The entire beehive is irritated before collection. Without the protection of the smoke, attacked by over 1,000 bees, this is how the elders lost their lives. rain becomes even heavier. The second torch is put out. The heavy rain makes the rivers look even more hideous. Wind gathers force in the valley. The third torch, if it doesn't work, he will have to quit as evening is coming. Combs and honey must be treated on the same night. 
Obtaining the high quality and precious golden beeswax is their mission. This place is located at the border of China and Nepal. Nima's beeswax will be sold to those in Nepal. Kathmandu is the manufacturing center of Buddha statues in the world. Golden beeswax is used by craftsmen to make molds for Buddha statues. The Buddha figures made from high quality Himalayan beeswax have smoother and shinier skins. Such bees, however, are quite different at another corner of the Himalayas. Here, the family home where bees settle down is said to have good luck. The male host is playing with his child in the courtyard, and bees are very calm. Only when the host drinks, chats, and laughs are these creatures a little anxious. But they have never attacked their master. One day, at the turn between autumn and winter, the bees flew away, leaving behind the comb that was half full of honey. They try not to damage the hive in the hopes of the bees' return next year. With little effort, the family can enjoy the honey that is the essence of nature. The Himalayas has nurtured both the malicious and the generous bees. A hill with gentle slopes on the side of the Yarlong Zhangbo River. Flowers bloom luxuriantly on the hill. Sheep seem to hate this kind of flower. And in fact, it has a frightening name. Wolfsbane. Though poisonous, wolfsbane is, in Dorgia's eyes, very useful. The root of wolfsbane, which contains the most poison, is the most useful part for Dorgia.
after being thoroughly cooked and smashed, the root of the wolfsbane is made into paper pulp. The Shlare village where Dorjia lives boasts a 1,300-year history of papermaking. Tibetan paper, which is mainly made from wolfsbane, is pliable and tough, as it can resist worms and doesn't change color easily. The paper can be kept for a long time. Here, paper will be given new lives. The most important use for Tibetan paper is associated with block printing, which also has a long history. There are more than 300,000 printing blocks at the Dilgu Scripture Printing Lamasery, which stores most classics of Tibetan culture. Here, books are printed by completely using printing blocks. In the early morning, the door is opened. The paper sheets that have been dried overnight are brought into the courtyard. Paper will soon meet with printing blocks. Paper, printing blocks, and a peaceful, happy heart. Brushing accompanies printing, just like religious cultivation. Paper sheets that are printed with scripture are then cut, polished, and dyed. In the end, they are bound together in books, 
which will enjoy the worship of followers in the future. In a region 4,500 meters above sea level, most crops can hardly grow. Nevertheless, local people are growing a kind of most tenacious and important crop, highland barley. The Dang Ra Yum Tsua is the largest holy lake for the Bon religion. One thousand years ago, this was the central area of the famous Katao dynasty. With an elevation of more than 4,500 meters, the wide lake and surrounding mountains creates a warm and moist climate. On a land plot beside the holy lake are hundreds of small farmland patches, all of which have their own names, like Foxtail and A Place Where the Moon Rises. These names show how much their owners cherish these lands. The land here is so precious that people need to make use of every inch. As a result, a special position has been set for the village, farm director. Duojia and his father and grandfather are all farm directors. Early in the morning, Dorjia came in front of an old house in the village and sought a special point with his hands. Leaning against this point, he looks towards another one. Dorjia calculates in his heart according to an ancient calendar and then selects an important date. A farm director is in charge of water. They have Dam Grayum but it is a holy lake with salt water and can't be used for irrigating fields. The village's water comes from the melt snow on the mountains. The plowing festival is a grand ceremony in spring, as well as a celebration and a blessing before plowing and sowing. Families gather their highland barley wine. People sit in the reservoir of their village to hear Duojia summarize their harvest last year and set plans for this year. <laughs> The mixed Highland barley wine is thrown into the air. The festival begins.
to see who is stronger, they place gigantic rocks in the middle of the reservoir. The rocks are then piled up into a column, which is tied with hada, a white silk scarf. People throw zanba at their farm director to pray for a good harvest this year. Chuomu, who is 80 years old, falls asleep during the ceremony. What she cares about now is her twin sister. Chuomu's elder sister is Wangmu, the one Chuomu cares about the most. Wangmu is a devout practitioner. 20 years ago, she came to the Holy Lake alone to start practicing Bon. During this period, she returned to the village only once. Wang Mu walks around the mountains surrounding the lake every day. The two sisters met each other half a year earlier. Chuo Mu, who recently learned about her sister's bad health, is very worried. Yeah, <laughs> By the lake, the two sisters seem to have a lot to talk about. 
ਬਹੁਤ ਮਨ ਨੂੰ ਕਰ ਲੱਗਣਾ ਤੇ ਸਾਲੇ ਚਲੇ ਸੋਨੇ ਤੋਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਗੇਰ ਨੂੰ ਮਿਕਸ ਆ ਸਭ ਨਾ ਬਟਾ ਮੇਲੇ ਜੇ ਜੰਤੀ On the day after the plowing festival, now filled with water, water will be released after the festival and seeds will embrace the soil again Highland barley is a unique ancient crop on the Qinghai Tibet Plateau. Now, it has over 70 breeds. Land, even in narrow valleys, can yield boundless imaginations for people. Chentang village hive collection is over and people have completed their mission of building buddha figures four months have passed and now it's time to get ready for the upcoming reaping chicken feet millet which resembles chicken feet stores special life energy the annual harvest begins After one year of growing, most chicken feet millet is made into wine by women. The wine is mixed with boiled water and drunk with straws. Mm. This is the favorite drink of the men. When most of the reaping is done, Long Kong's new house is completed. A three-day carnival then follows. <laughs> the most important element of the carnival is chicken feed wine. These men with braided hair drink the wine, singing and dancing with heartfelt pleasure. Even a 92-year-old lady drinks. Several straws are placed into a big bucket for all to drink together until they are all drunk together.
after reaping all of the crops, people will walk deep into the forest to look for a mysterious hot spring. There are nine natural spring openings here, and these laborers drive away their fatigue with the water. A secret that has been passed down through the generations. If people showed no respect for the springs, the water would cool down. This is the central region of the roof of the world. People live and work here enjoying the gifts of the land. The land in the middle reaches of the Yarlong Zhangbo River is scattered with sand dunes. The river level changes with the seasons. Water volume decreases in winter, revealing the riverbed. The freezing wind on the plateau blows up grains of sand which pile up into gentle sloped sand dunes on the banks. Suolang, who is responsible for sand treatment, walks through these sand dunes every day. This is a huge national project. Fighting with the sand is a slow task. It is not difficult to dig wells under sand dunes, but pipes are often blocked by sand and can't carry water to farther sand dunes. Fortunately, there are other solutions. They first surround sand dunes with poplar and willow, and then set up square areas for these sand dunes with wood sticks. They will spread shrub seeds at these areas. In the strong sunlight, these laborers turn sand dunes into a picture.
Sometimes, Suolang will visit the trees he planted in his early years to listen to the sound of these plants. After 30 years, Suolang can't remember how many trees he has planted. He believes that one day, this valley will be covered with a dense forest. The land of the plateau also yields a unique building material, aga clay. Tamping the clay with gravel to build roofs or ground surface is called hitting aga. The teams made up of seniors are responsible for solidifying gravel. After aga clay is mixed with water, lasting heat is needed for forging. This process is also called thoroughly tempering. Every patch of ground surface involves at least seven or eight days of hammering. The process consists of uninterrupted drying, watering, and hammering. Roofs made from aga clay are very strong and will not collapse even if the supporting beams are broken. Young people in the Aga striking teams inject modern elements into this activity. During Aga hitting activities, whatever you sing doesn't matter. It is the freedom of the hands and feet, as well as a light heart that counts. According to Tibetans, Aga clay is neither stones nor dirt. It is the essence of the earth. <laughs> 